The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada is a power of engineering. Help you, yes, you find the things you want on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Good question. Um, so I just covered on the desk of Lady Ada that I am revising many display things that were uh, did not really make it through the chip shortage and have to have um, serious revisions done to them because so many parts changed backlight drivers and uh, connectors and tfts and touchscreen controllers and, and more and more um so this 2.4 i agree this 2.4 uh tft feather wing has been revised and um since i revised the um the feather wing version you know like you can plug in you know various feathers I wanted to also update the uh, Raspberry Pi version of like the same thing. So this, uh, let's go to the computer. I'll show off this hat. Um, so hats are hardware attached to top for Raspberry Pis. And I did also put off a lot of these because the Raspberry Pis were not available for like a year-ish. I mean, you could get them, but it was like very challenging. And so, um, you know, in my gigantic pile of revisions, I hit 450 revisions last night out of 600-ish boards that we manufacture right now. Um, the Raspberry Pi ones kind of got put on the kind of the end of the list. Cause I was like, well, I'm gonna wait till Raspberry Pis are available again anyways. So this also um, needs to be revised. A lot of different pieces and parts are not available. Um, uh, the, you know, the uh, resistive touch uh, controller and the TFT were hard to get, but now that they're uh, back to getting it back to, um, uh, manufacture. Um, another part that actually got discontinued as a specific EEPROM vendor that I use for these EEPROMs is unavailable. Um, so I thought I would also do a quick changeover to use a different vendor for these. I would say, you know, uh, jelly bean components. This is the EEPROM. So um, Raspberry Pi, you know, and there's a more Raspberry Pis are available now. So people can start making um, Raspberry Pi accessories. And one of the standards for hats is not only um, the shape, but, okay, so this Raspberry Pi official article, which is like nine years old, by the way, uh, from 2014, talks about the standards of hats. And not only does it dictate, you know, the pinouts and the you know physical shape with all the slots, but down here, uh, sorry, this Okay, they talk about um, this EEPROM that is on board. So there's two special I squared C pins on the hat pinout that are not used for like user I squared C, they're for hat identification. And if you attach a generic I squared C EEPROM to it, and there's a little tool that helps you format the data that goes into the EEPROM so that um, the Raspberry Pi software can identify it. The idea is that you would be able to put a hat on like a display or like the sense hat or like activity hat or whatever um or like the lego hat that they made and it would automatically know like oh i saw that you attached display hat let me load up the device tree kernel overlay and any other software and install it and get it ready so it's like almost as plug as play as usb on like a mac or windows computer where you plug in you know your mouse and it just magically works or you plug in your monitor and it just magically works the idea would be the same thing but with hardware um so um let's go back here so um this eprom here and i think you know yeah it's a 32 you can barely see but it says 24 c32 these are generic i squared c eproms and 99 percent of the time they come in this 8 soic format the 24LC or C series is what they usually start with, or so sometimes it's cat 32. So you know, there's there's 24 in there and then 32 for 32 kilobit, which is eight kilobytes, um, somewhere in the name, but there's sometimes like a C or an L or a cat or an ST. And I'll show you that when we search for it. They're all basically generic and identical. Sometimes they have um, extra capabilities, but you can pretty much use any one you want and they all respond to I squared C address 50, and then they have three address pins that can go from 50 to um, OXF57, uh, right? Because they have three addresses. Um, 
So let's uh, go to DigiKey and I'll show you searching for these. Oh, so we, in a previous great search tool for 25 Q series chips. So you're like, oh, why can't they just use like the, you know, 25 GD 25 Q or W 25 Q? The 25 is the SPI version of the NOR flash. It's different than EEPROM. So watch out. And there's also 23 series. Um, 23 LC and I believe 23 LC is SRAM. Yeah. So let me just verify. Yeah, it's SRAM. SRAM does not is volatile. When you write data, it doesn't stick around after reboot. So it's great for our, um when we use when we need like a big memory buffer for say um e-ink displays we use it as like a back buffer for the e-ink because we don't care how fast it is e-ink is very slow uh, but we do need a lot of memory to buffer the entire display and we might want to do it off the microcontroller uh, if you don't have ps ram 25 series is not eeprom it's flash you need to erase and basically write a whole page at the same time um, so it's good for large storage it's not good for small amounts of storage eeprom which is the 24 series is great for small amounts of data yeah i don't think you can store more than a couple kilobytes the spi nor ram uh, nor flash gets easily up to like 16 um megabytes uh, i think they probably even make more but it's good for like the megabyte range eprom good for the kilobyte range and non-volatile and you can erase and write one byte at a time which is quite nice uh actually it's just good for and it's also i squared c uh, and these are used often, there's used for like FPGA configurations, um, Mac address data for uh, LoRa and Ethernet uh, devices, um, non-secure configuration. Remember, you can read and write from them clearly, they're in clear text, not good for security key storage, okay? not That's not what they're good for. They're good for calibration data, um, serial numbers where you don't care if they get changed, but it's good for like, you know, identification. And again, like Mac addresses and stuff, or, um, you know, if you want to identify the board, that's a common, common EDIDs for monitors are stored on the EEPROM. So let's look at memory. So let's look only at active. Uh, I searched for I squared C EEPROM. So we're only going to get, you know, what we're looking for there. Um, we, I think we've covered FRAM on INMPI before. That is more expensive, uh, but it's instantaneous, right? And it doesn't get affected by, um, x-rays or whatever like particles in space and so if you're sending stuff up in space fram is a good idea and eh, we're not doing that also sram is volatile so we don't want sram we want eeprom only and we want surface mount because we're going to put this on uh, a surface mount board like this and there's a lot of options and then remember we're going to look for uh 32 kilobits don't forget a lot of these memories it's i even get confused all the time they are defined in kilobits um and then if you want to know how many kilobytes you have to divide by eight four kilobytes 32 kilobits let's do it okay so that really pairs it down um you will pay more for more kilobits so just pick the number one thing to watch for you can sometimes go up one sizing so if like you need you know if you're spec'd for one kilobit sorry, one kilobyte, you may be able to swap in a four kilobyte version. All the pins are, they're all pin compatible, but the I squared C commands to address the memory are not compatible. For the smaller memories, you can, you literally will use only one byte of address if it's under like 256 bytes of data. And then, you know, up to 64 uh, kilobytes, you would use uh, two address. And then beyond that, you'd use three address bytes. Uh, and so it's not necessarily like, you know, smaller to larger, just make sure you don't pass over that number of address bits red, uh, boundary because your code will no longer work. You can't just put in a huge chip and think it'll work in something that's expecting a one or two address uh, by uh, command um, to get data or write data. Um, okay, so uh, I think this looks good oh, for voltage supply. Uh, in this case, uh, for the Raspberry Pi, it's 3.3 volt logic. Uh, so I just want to avoid, you know, everything that requires 4.5 volts. I don't think it's that many, to be honest. 
And then uh, 220 options. Again, these are jelly bean parts. Every chip company pretty much makes an I2CE squared prom. Let's just look for in stock and not marketplace. So that gets us one half down. Okay. So you'll notice that there's a lot of different packages uh, for this. Um, so these EEPROMs are not that big. And so you can get them in a lot of package sizes. The, you know, official-ish standard is SOIC. Uh, so, you know, again, sometimes they don't start with uh, just 24. They have CAT. Sometimes it's C. Sometimes it's LC for, like, low power. Um, but you'll always see that 24 in there, and you'll always see for 32 kilobits, 32, 64 kilobits, 64, 8 kilobits, 08, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they do come in like DFN sizes. One interesting thing is if you are using this in a tightly packed, you know, you're, it's a small package, um, sorry, a small layout, you don't want to like have this huge chunk in SOIC chip taking up a lot of room. You can get the chips in SOT 23.5 as well. Uh, for SOT 23.5, I will say, um, one thing to just watch out for, it's not a huge deal, um, but this is a standard SOIC and TSOP package. The SOT23 drops the address pins. There's three address pins missing. And so the, it will, you'd think, oh, okay, so it only responds to address OX50. Actually, it will respond to all addresses that it could have been set to if it had address pins. Mm. So you will see both OX50, 51, 52, 53, up to 57 on um, i squared c um because it was meant it's meant to like oh you know whatever configuration so if you have nothing else on the i squared c bus that could conflict like in the version of this hat totally fine to use the sot 23 smaller not less expensive usually it's a little bit more expensive um if you're using the S a S O I C, you just set the address pins and then you can have a unique um address selection uh, do note that they do have internal pull-ups sometimes or pull-downs, so just watch out for that. You want to connect them. Don't leave them floating. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes these have other stuff, like they have, uh, you know, serial numbers or, uh, to protect, you know, write protection areas. But for, like, general purpose stuff, like just saving and reading data, you don't really have to... You're probably not using some of the, the special things that each each manufacturer adds in to like spike. You know, it's like, oh, this is my recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Like, I am cumin. You know, they all add something a little bit unique uh, to make it tangy. But for generic purposes, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, they even come in. If you want tiny packages, you can get it in this like, you know, two millimeter probably by two millimeter size package. 1.4 by 1.7. So tiny little EE prom, but you'll see it still has the 24 and 32 and the C in there. This one has a G for some reason, I guess. But anyways, um, searching by uh, price. Let's actually go, let's go specifically say we want SOIC because I really just do want, and watch out, there's also narrow and wide SOIC. In this case, the part that I'm replacing is narrow. So let me get the, uh, the narrow or medium width you also get uh sot 74 tiny sot series um yeah a lot of good options so i think what did i pick in the end i don't know they're all good i think you know this one is fine this uh m24 c32 from st you know it's about like 20 cents in quantity sounds reasonable i squared c up to one megahertz wide voltage supply range uh and you know good everyday four kilobit a uh, kilobyte i squared ce prom so I'll pick some of these up and i'll get those pie hats back in the manufacturer that's a great search Where